welcome to uh, another conference call with Lions Roar at the church. Okay, and uh, tonight's topic for November 16th, 2016. It is the 16th, right? All right, I've been writing, been writing it all day. I don't know why I forgot now. Okay, so uh, tonight's conference call is going to be concerning porn and addictions. Porn and addictions, pornography industry. All right, then we're going to look at how it correlates in the Bible. One little area really plagues our people, whether we know it or not. But a lot of us are off into this porn industry with addictions. Okay, so let's go ahead and touch on this tonight. Um, first thing I want to do is go to Colossians 3, verse 17. Colossians 3 and 17. Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 and whatsoever you do in word or deed do all by Hashem Mashiach Yahweh Shai giving thanks to the Abba Yahweh by him everything is done through the Father and the Son and through his word so um, I felt that this would be a very interesting topic tonight uh, this affects old and young. This affects married and single. This affects those who are on disabilities. This one topic, okay? And um, it's plaguing our people as well. There's so many things that is generated by an engine that Esau has put together to seduce our people, whether we know it or not. We're all being seduced, okay? Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Let's go there real quick. If you have your Bibles, pens and the pads, let's go to this verse. And uh, the interesting thing about the point in the script is that uh, you very seldom hear about things on the news uh, about the porn industry. And the porn industry is um, they have they have people on there who uh, pretty much. Uh, we, our, our people, we fantasize over a certain type of individual, and the porn industry feeds into the images that we that we fantasize about. So when they come out with the images, of course we're fantasizing about it. And when we see it, you you actually attach yourself to what's going on in the film. Okay, but what we what we, what we don't know about the industry is. A lot of these people are uh, serious whoremongers. Um, Free me. They right. are, um, there's a lot of venereal diseases going on in the industry, in the porn industry. Okay? There's uh, actors who have affected or infected people with diseases such as chlamydia, gonorrhea, HIV, wiped out whole caste systems based on uh, just filming a movie. is because uh, they're doing something that's against the order of the Most High. That's, that's pr predominantly what it is. It's against the order of the Most High. Okay? Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of the Most High Yahweh, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay. It's arrived. It's arrived. Ephesians 4 and 30 it says and grieve not the Holy Spirit 
That's talking about don't get tired of this. Don't get tired of following this word. Don't get tired of your first love. Okay? And don't let it grieve you because you want to do something that you really shouldn't be doing. Okay? Watching porn or any other sin that might be controlling you. Whether it be drinking, smoking, or using drugs or anything. When you stop doing those things, don't let it grieve you. Okay? This should overcome whatever you're doing. All right? By, by your willingness wanting to follow the Most High, it should overcome any kind of plague that you're suffering with. Because all these are plagues. That's all they are. Let's go to 1 John 2 and 16. 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2 verse 16. And it reads, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. <clears throat> so we got to understand. So when we read this scripture, we already knew that there are many vices that turn many individuals into what? Troubled individuals. Even possessed individuals. Everything most of us desire is mostly initiated through what? Th through the eyes. That feeds the bigger eye, which is your mind. Television is one. Bulletin boards, posters, computers. Now you got cell phone apps, right? All sorts of advertisements with eye triggers. All sin is now what? At your fingertips. All sin. All at your fingertips. So, how do you combat this? It was never like this in the ancient days or the ancient world. Things weren't at your fingertips. You had to go out of your house to get to the sin that you wanted to operate in. Now everything's within your house, within your room, within your back, wherever you are. You got your cell phone with you. Everything's at the fingertips. Facebook, YouTube, uh, Periscope, all right, Instagram. All these different things are at your fingertips. Sin is at your fingertips. Okay, porn industry at your fingertips. Okay, Psalms 119 and 37. Let's go there. So we have to learn how to combat this, brothers and sisters. If we if we don't know how to combat this, using the scriptures and and wanting to please the Most High, I don't know what to tell you. You know, we have each other in order to get out of this, out of this problem. This is Psalms 119, verse 37. It says, Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy... So we have, to, um, we have to understand that our eyes are the trigger. Our eyes are the things that control us. Whatever we see, we cause that to sin. I mean, you look at the beggars that, you know, that are in the scripture who were blind. They, they couldn't really commit any sin. They were beggars for a reason. Okay? The only sin that they possibly could uh, commit was, what, stealing or thievery. Okay? Uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and 13. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. Yeah, these days are a lot worse than those days. By long shot, based on the technology that we have. Anybody who says different, I, 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 beg, I beg to differ. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There have no temptation, there have no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But, but Yahweh is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. Everything that you're tempted by, you allow yourself to be tempted by it, by your lust. It's not the most high tempting you. It's yourself. It's your lust that tempts you. Okay? We all have this problem. We have different vices. All of our sins are not the same. We all have different vices. But it's our lust that allows us to sin. This is what puts us in that predicament. It says, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear. You cannot bear a temptation by yourself. 
You have to pray, you have to pray and, and seek the most high to get out of it. It says, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from what? Idolatry. Okay, all this is idolatry. Everything that we deal with is idolatry. So let's look at a bullseye target. Like I said, the porn industry is considered a bullseye target. It's everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, you go on the YouTube and you type up a video and say you're looking for a documentary. You're looking for a serious documentary. Now, you pull a documentary up, you look on the side, they got all extra little video skits on the right-hand side. You might see something sexual, explicit, in one of those videos on the side of that documentary that you're watching. That has nothing to do with what you're watching. It's just there. Woman exposing her breasts. All right? If, if you're in that temptation, after that video is over, you might just click on that one, one video because that's where your mind is going. It's, that's your old man. That's your old lust that you had. So the whole industry, the whole advertisement industry is geared on making you fall off, fall off that pedestal of doing, doing righteousness into doing negativity. So this affects relationships. This affects families. This even affects individuals. The porn industry has hooks in many people of the world today. I wouldn't doubt if it was billions of people that were hooked on porn today. Okay? Because now you have children who watch porn. You have 12. I'll give you an example. I used to be a coach of a basketball team. The, kid, the children who were playing basketball were like 12 years old. There was one little boy, he had a cell phone. He had a problem with watching porn. He would pull that stuff up so fast on his, and then he would show it off to the other boys like it was nothing. Right? And what is he doing? Enticing these other boys who know nothing about it. Before you know it, now you got all these little whoremongers. Right? And so they grow up looking for those images and the women who wear these uh, who wear these clothes with the vibration coming off of them like a porn star that's who they go after okay so the images are out there the devices the apps all the stuff is out there amongst our children it's amongst our people it's amongst everybody I, uh, those <laughs> there was another example I wanted to mention just now just came to mind I was talking to a hotel, uh, a hotel planner. Okay, this lady, she would host the events of all the different um, uh, activities in a hotel. So she was telling me about um, uh, the porn. Uh, I guess they have a pay-per-view on their cable services. They have uh, uh, Playboy services. And I asked her, I said, out of all the people, all these festivals that you have, which entity or which, um, which group of people watch that porn more than anybody? You know what she told me? She said, the churches. She said, the churches are the biggest, are the biggest group of people who purchase those videos on the television set. So, I mean, are they, are, are they really living godly? They do one thing outside of, of, the, of the church and they do another thing inside the church. Two different, two different people. Double-minded. So, I mean, it's affecting everybody. Everybody. Okay. Let's look at James 4 and 7. James chapter 4 verse 7. And it reads, Submit yourselves therefore to Yahweh. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. This is all you got to do. The Most High is showing you the power that you have. All you got to do is resist them. You women having problems with men that keep coming back in your lives, all you got to do is resist them. They'll disappear. Same thing with you men dealing with women who you just know are no good for you. Just resist them. Okay? They'll flee from you. Okay? The spirit is stronger than what you think. Let's read um, 
Let's go into Psalms chapter 119. In the Old Testament, Psalms 119. Psalms 119, verse 9. Let's go to verse 9. Psalms, chapter 119, verse 9. It says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way, or a young woman? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. You have to listen, understand what he's saying, and do it. That's what taking heed is. It says, With my whole heart have I sought you. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Okay? So when you are um, looking at this topic that we're bringing out, think about some of these commandments that speaks on what we're talking about. When it comes to porn, men and women eyeballs control most people today. You know, the eyeballs are, what are the controlling device. The commandments in conjunction with these behaviors are where? That's what I'm asking. Where are these, where are these commandments at? Okay, if you go into Exodus chapter 20, what, what commandments would actually be the triggers to the porn industry? Let's find it. Let's find one or two. Exodus chapter 20. When you go to Exodus chapter 20 and you drop down, look at verse 17. It says, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is in thy neighbor's. Okay, so when you read this verse, this is talking about everything. The porn industry is one. I mean, when you see a man and a woman making love on TV or having sex on TV, Basically what? You're a peeping Tom. You're watching them have sex. And not only that, you're basically committing a homosexual act by watching that man get nude. Never thought about that, huh? When a man gets nude and you're watching him un being nude in the act of having sex, that's a form of what? Homosexuality. Whether, you, whether you're looking at him or not, you're still looking in somebody else's window of their house. Okay? Let's go to um, the 14th verse. It's like uh, being a peeping Tom or a peeping Tanya. How's that? Exodus 20 and 14. It says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay, that's another one. Did you not know that most of the women who are on uh, porn videos are married, but they are still they're considered workers on, in, in that entertainment industry? They're married outside of that. But they're still in here having sex with all these different men. You're contributing to that adultery by watching it. So all of these different commandments are flying at you now. Okay? And, and you're not thinking you're a part of it, but it's a virtual reality. You're a part of it. It's getting your emotions going. Okay? So adultery carries more weight than fornication, but the end result? For both in the Old Testament was always death, immediately. But when Hamashiach came, something different happened. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 speaks on that. Let's go there real quick. 1 Corinthians. So Yahushua, when he came back, he was showing our people, look, they still have a chance to repent. You ain't got to stone them just yet. Okay? You got a chance to repent. You got a chance to change. You got a chance to come out of that adultery. For a lot of you who don't know what adultery is, let me break it down to you real quick. And you probably look it up in a dictionary. For a lot of you women who don't know what adultery is, adultery is when uh, a man sleeps with another man's wife. That's adultery. Okay? You women, uh, fornication is when neither one of you are married. And you're having sex. That adultery part where the woman is actually not married and she's sleeping with a married man, that's actually fornication more so than adultery. 
Okay, hopefully I'm not getting you confused. So let me explain it again. Adultery is when a man, a married man, or a man that's single, sleeps with a man's wife, another man's wife. That's adultery. Okay, when a man sleeps with a woman, even if he's married, that's not adultery. What that is, is fornication, if that woman is single. Okay, so that's the barrier, that's the boundary. Now, if a single man and a single woman sleep together, that's a form of fornication. Okay, if, they, if, they, if that woman is not betrothed to that man, meaning engaged, that's a form of fornication as well. Okay, now I can show it to you in the scriptures. Um, and I, matter of fact, I am going to show it to you in the scriptures. After uh, I show you this in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and 9, I want to show it to you. Uh, matter of fact, let's go there now. Let's go to Deuteronomy 23 and 18. Let me uh, show you what, because they didn't really talk about fornication in the Old Testament. They talked about it in a different light. They didn't actually say the word fornicate. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17. There shall no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. See, our daughters could not be sleeping around back then. Let's go to another verse. Okay, let's go to Deuteronomy 23 and 18. Deuteronomy 23, verse 18. There were parameters of the law when it came to a man dealing with a uh, woman who was single, how they dealt with the judgment. This is Deuteronomy 23 and 18. It says, Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Most High for any vow. For even both these are abominations unto the Most High. Okay, so this is talking about a whorish woman. This is Deuteronomy 23 and 18. Yeah, let me go to Exodus 22 and 16. Maybe this will explain it better. Let's get some a little something different. Exodus 22 and 16. Going off the top of my head. Yeah, here it is. Exodus 22 and 16. And this is the definition of fornication in the Old Bible. I mean, in the Old Testament. It says, this is Exodus 22 and 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed. Betrothed means what? Engaged. Okay. And lie with her. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. So back then, if you slept with a woman... And you were just, you know, you seduced her. You were supposed to marry her. That's how it was in the Old Testament. Okay, let's read on. If her father utterly refused to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. What's the dowry of virgins? Whenever a man would sleep with a woman, that man would have to pay the father whatever the father asked. But in this particular case, the Levites had an a, a office where they charged them uh, a certain amount of money, which was 50 shekels. Okay, so back then, you didn't have a choice. And this law still applies in, in the Middle East, believe it or not. It still applies in the Middle East. Okay, a lot of these laws in the Old Testament and the Bible are still performed by a lot of the tribes or people who dwell in the Middle East today. Okay. So, let's understand that. Now, when we get into the other one, let's go to 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. This is when it starts to talk about fornication in the New Testament. And this stuff has to, we have to, as, as believers, we can't skip over this stuff. We got to speak on this stuff. Because if we don't speak on it, we're condemning all each, we're condemning ourselves. So we, we have to speak on these different uh, parameters of the law. Okay? 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. It says, Know ye not that, that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High? Be not deceived or seduced, neither fornicators, 
nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminates. What is the effeminate? That is a man who has female tendencies. He may not be gay, but he may have a female tendency. You know, the movement of the hand, uh, the, the, the speech of his voice being very feminine. Uh, the way he walks is feminine. You know, but he's not necessarily gay. Like Tevin Campbell, everybody thought he was gay when he was growing up, but he ended up turning out to be the biggest whoremonger of them all, chasing women. All right? Uh, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of the Most High. So here he is breaking down. This is Paul breaking down some of these things with adultery and fornication. Okay? And also, you have to also remember that adultery first and foremost was going up against the most high servant of the gods too that was a form of adultery same thing with fornication some people were believing in the most high but they was tampering around with other religions that's a form of fornication too it's a spiritual thing as well it's not necessarily a man and woman all the time sometimes when you read the bible it's dealing with different religions okay because you got brothers like that today They'll say they in Islam, but they'll turn around and say, I'm an Israelite. Here you are, you mess with two different things. It's either you are one or the other, one or the other. Okay? So we have to understand how that goes. So repentance plays a huge part in our lives at this time instead of death right away. But if the mercy runs out and none of us know when that is today, you know, that could happen at any time if the mercy runs out. If that happens and the mercy runs out, then that's the plague and then possibly the death. See, even though we're not judged by the priest now, we're holding all this to ourselves. We're the ones who are going to be condemned based on our merits. It's not so much that now someone go report us to the priest and they come slay us. Now the Most High is judging us. You know? And... Um, that's a harsh way to go. A lot of times people don't understand why this person gets uh, uh, checked out or get diseases or die. Normally it's because of judgment. So when you look at the scriptures, now what type of society are we living in today? What type of society is uh, these times to help you understand? Is it a fornication period or is it an adultery period? What would that be? Anybody know the answer to that? When you look around, you see all the people doing their thing. Is that a form of fornication or is that adultery? It's an easy question. What do y'all think? I think it's point. Say that again? I think it's adultery. Adultery? One said fornication? Just, okay, come, come. These said fornication. I said adultery. Okay. And, uh, for me, says fornication. Okay, I'll say this. You're both right. Yeah. I'll say this, that you're both right. But let's look at the scriptures and let's see what the scriptures say. Let's go to Matthew 16 and 4. Matthew chapter 16 and 4. So in Matthew chapter 16, verse 4. This is what Hamashiach Yahushai read or said. Okay, I'll start at verse 3. Verse 3. And in the morning it will be foul weather today. He was talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees. For the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but can you not discern the signs of the times? We're living during the signs of the times today. This is what Yahushai called this generation. He says, a wicked and adulterous generation seek after a sign. So this is an adulterous generation today. Why is it an adulterous generation? Because what we just read earlier in the Old Testament, it says if a man sleeps with a woman, what? He's supposed to marry her off. But nowadays, men are not marrying women off after they sleep with them or have sex, sexual uh, intercourse with them. So the woman goes her way, the man goes his way. That was supposed to be a marriage right there. Okay? Because it was not, and they split. 
That woman goes and gets with another man, that becomes what? Adultery. That man goes and gets with another woman who is with another man, that's a form of adultery. Check this out. All of you who are on this conference call today are all adulterers. All of you. Unless you repent. Okay? That's what he meant by adulterous generation. Not only that, people of the world today are worshiping many different gods. They're adulterers in that aspect as well. Okay? So that's what you have to understand. This is why Hamashiach Yahushai calls this a wicked and adulterous generation because we're all in sin. Sleeping with this person, that person, this person, that person is all a form of adultery. It takes precedent over the fornication. This is why he, he uh, claims in Hebrews 13 and 4 that it's an honor to be married. It's an honor to get married. Okay? When you live and you're single most of your life, you stay an adulteress. How are you going to enter the kingdom? See? You're never going to get into the kingdom because when you're dealing with different relationships, you end up having hooks in you and you end up doing things that you really don't want to do for that person or another person. Okay? Because this is what we have to understand. He also calls it what? A sodomite generation. He said this is spiritually known as Egypt and spiritually known as Sodom. Egypt being bondage, a lot of you are an adulteress who are dwelling in bondage under the what? The different people that you're uh, uh, under. All right. So um, I want to show you. Let me show you this real quick. Let's go to um, Mark chapter 16. And not only that, when, like I said, when you watch the porn, it's a whole nother thing. It's a whole nother aspect of that sin. These are mountains and demons that are accumulating in our bodies, in our spirits. Let's go to Mark 16. And let's go to verse 9. Mark 16 and 9, it says, Now when Yahushua was risen early, the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene. Remember, Mary Magdalene was the prostitute. Okay, it says, out of whom he had cast, what? Seven devils. Now, those seven devils could have possibly been men that she had been sleeping around with. If she was a prostitute to those men, those were regular customers that were coming back regularly. She was, she was in captivity in her spirit to those men. Go to Luke 8 and 2. Remember, he told her, sin no more, lest something worse happen to you. Luke chapter 8, verse 2. Luke 8 and 2. It says, And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits, these are the prostitutes that he was healing. It wasn't just Mary Magdalene, it was other people, it was other women too, prostitutes. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. Okay? So these are the same thing as demons accumulating based on sexual bondage. All right? The sex that... The, why do you think Esau is pushing the sexual thing out there in the open for us? He wants all to be condemned. Every last one of us to be condemned. Even the prophets are going to get uh, seduced by women. But the scriptures tell you in um, Revelation 14 that they were not seduced by women, that they were virgins. And it's not only talking about physical women, but it's also talking about religions. So you have to understand, we got a protocol to follow. And the protocol is the Most High's protocol. Now, let's see the point, the point of the Bible. Let's get into that part. So I, all I want to say is to repent to all my brothers and sisters out there so you can follow. And I know a lot of other the nations are, are listening to this when I put it up on the YouTube. A lot of the heathens are learning from this too. Okay? A lot of the heathens are learning from what we're pushing out here. And it's a good thing. The Most High wants ultimately everyone to follow His law, statutes, and commandments. But first and foremost, it goes to the children of Israel. So when a man or woman watches porn intently, 
It arouses them by the, what? Their eyes focusing on the movement of the individuals in a sexual manner on TV, computers, or the phones. You know, whether it be touching, kissing, role playing. You know, like I said before, y'all are all being peeping times watching this stuff. You're getting stimulated by it. It's arrived. Okay. These are all vices. The YouTubes, the Facebook, that, like I said, the advertisement. These are all vices. So we have to get, we have to understand what Satan is doing to us. It's just like the food, the dietary laws. We learn how to cut a lot of things out of our diet. It's the same things with what we watch too. Let's look at, um, let's go to 2 Samuel. Let me show you King David. King David had a lust too. Don't think that it's just you. Our strongest king fell to porn, basically. I consider it soft porn. You got hard porn, you got soft porn. King David fell to soft porn. And then he acted on the matter. 2 Samuel, let's go to... Uh, Chapter 11. 2 Samuel chapter 11, and let's drop down to verse um, 3. Let's start at 2. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 2. And it came to pass in the evening time that David arose from his bed, off his bed. And walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. Because back then the women washed outside. Okay. They would either go down to the river. Or they would go outside and have a foot tub. Where they would fill it up with hot water. And they would wash outside on their porch. Okay. So if you, if you lived in a castle like King David. Which was probably three, four stories higher than the rest of the uh, porches. You can see everything going on. It says, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired of or after the woman. And one said, is not this Bathsheba the daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? So what, what was King David doing? He was looking at her undress. He was looking at her bosom. He was looking at everything, her buttocks. He was watching her undress. That's why I said it's like soft porn. So, what do you think? What do you think King David was thinking of when he saw this? He wanted her. He started to uh, he started to work off his actions. Let's go to verse three again. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, "Is not this Bathsheba the daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite?" And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness. So she fell too. And arrived. And she returned unto her house. So what does it mean when it says, for she was purified from her uncleanness? That means that they had to what? Learn? They had to know something. They had to know the law. Why did she? Why didn't she leave before her, her uncleanness? What is this talking about? The uncleanness part. Any of you brothers and sisters know what this is talking about? The uncleanness? We spoke about this some months ago. Just seeing if any of y'all is paying attention. So the uncleanness, if you go to Leviticus 15 and 18, let's go there real quick. See, there's a law after you have sexual relations with a woman or a man. A woman with a man. You just don't get up and do your thing, right? Let's go to Leviticus 15 and 18. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 18. The woman also with whom men shall lie with, seed of copulation, that sperm, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the what? Until the evening. So there's an order in place here. There's a law. There's a law saying the only way you're going to be clean is to wait upon the evening time. Same thing with your prayers. When you sin, the scriptures tell you that your prayer is abominable to the Most High if you don't hear his laws. 
Okay, when you read Proverbs, um, Proverbs 29, it tells you, let's go there real quick. You guys ain't got to turn to it, I'll just read it. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. So when you read this, when he says in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 4, that they, that they washed themselves until the evening, that's when they were clean. So did they not know the law of adultery? If they knew the law of cleanliness, they had to know the law of adultery too. So they knew the laws, but they weren't following them. They broke the laws. King David lacked what? He lacked control of his body, and he lacked understanding because he didn't want to follow the laws. That's what I mean by nodding off. When you nod off, it's just like sinning. It's the same thing. It's a nod, like I said last week. So King David lacked what? Understanding by sleeping with another man's wife. This is the king of Israel. All right, the punishment was death back then. King David got away with it, but it fell back on his children. His children ended up dying. He lost three sons behind this. Let's go to Proverbs 6 and 32. Proverbs 6 and 32. So that's a form of porn. And see, the thing about the porn industry, when you watch it enough, you keep watching it over and over, then it starts to, you know, in your mind, you want to act it out. Just like King David acted, acted this out. When you see that woman that, that looks like that image that you saw in the porn video, you want that woman. You want to do the same thing that you was doing in the porn with this woman or that man. All right. So it's the same thing. Proverbs 6 and 32. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. See that? So King David destroyed his own soul by doing that. This is the king of Israel. Look at verse 33. A wound and dishonor shall be he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. So that reproach, we're reading about King David's reproach right now. All of us know about King David's sin. That it's not going to be wiped away. Okay? A lot of brothers are involved in this adultery thing and they can't stop it. Some men seek for women who are married. Some women seek for men who are married. They'd rather deal with someone who's married than not married. And what it does is it creates hooks in your back where you can't get away, in your spirit, okay? Those are the demons that Mary Magdalene had. She had the same demons. Remember, no one cast a stone when Yahushua says, he who is without sin cast the first stone. Who do you think were her clients? A lot of them Pharisees and Sadducees. Let's go to Job 31 and 1. Look at Job 31.1. Look at what Job said. All these things that we're fighting with today, they fought with them too. They had the same issues that we have today. You have beautiful women then, just like we have beautiful women today. It's no different. Alright? So, how do we deal with such? We deal with it by, hey, doing what he say do. Job, Job 31 and 1. Job chapter 31 verse 1. He said, I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? For what portion of the Most High is there from above? And what inheritance of the Almighty from on high? So look at this. Now Job knew that if he looked upon a maid, it was a form of sin. Let's read down below. Let's go to verse 9. This is Job 31 and 9. But a lot of you brothers and sisters ain't never heard this part about Job. He said, if my heart have been deceived by a woman. Remember Job was married. It says, or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door. That's what King David did, right? 
It says, Then let my wife grind unto another, and let others bow down upon her. So this is what King David had happened to him. Absalom slept with his own dad's wife in front of the public eye. King David saw his son having sex with his wife. Okay? Remember, this was one of the plagues that our, our forefathers had. Reuben. Reuben slept with one of Abraham's concubines. Okay? Uh, verse 11. For this is a heinous crime. Yea, it is an iniquity to be punished by the judges. So here's Job saying, look, man, if I grind to another woman, then what? It, comes, it backfires. Then my wife is going to mess around and have sex. Okay? It's just, it's just the, uh, it's, it's the ramification of all the laws, man. Whatever you do opposite of that, the judgment or the curses come on you. The same thing happens to you. So we have to understand, look, for every consequence that we do, it backfires on us. More so than any other nation. More so than the Gentiles. All right. So this is what you see a lot of stuff going on uh, in, in Israel. Okay, in divorce court. You see a brother sleep with a woman. His wife finds out about it. She sleeps with, a, with another man. They love each other. They battling, but they try to split up at the same time because they can't stand each other. This is the same thing here in the scriptures. This is divorce court through the scriptures. Let's go to Hebrews 13 and 4. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. And all of us been through this, man. I mean, you know, for a lot of young brothers in this, you, you know, hopefully you don't have to go through this by hearing these words of the scriptures. This should make you wiser and more cautious before even getting involved in stuff like this. And you sisters too. This should make you wiser. Hebrews 13 and 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers the Most High will judge. That's what Job said. So it used to be the Levites or the judges would judge you. Now it's the Most High himself is going to judge us. Okay? We're going to be judged by the Most High, whatever we do now. So we have to follow what they say do. This is where in the New Testament, Yahweh Shai used the example of um, Matthew 5 and 27. This is the example that he used. In the scriptures. Matthew chapter 5 and 27. Yahushua said. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time. Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you. That whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her. Pornography. All right, have committed adultery with her already in his heart. Okay, so this is what Yahushua was saying. This verse is put in here specifically for that generation and this generation. That's why he said, not one jot, one tittle will fail from the law. So when brothers say, oh, the law is done away with. No, the law is still here. We still have to follow this in order to get into the kingdom. Okay, the rules are still here for us to get out. If the rules are not here, then we're doomed. We're doomed if we can't have any rules to get out of here. That's why I tell y'all, stick to these rules. If you don't stick to them, and like I said before, I was talking to a brother this weekend uh, who, was, who said that the laws were done away with, and we were just trying to urge him to see the scriptures, go home and read it for himself, that the laws are still here. How, how else are we going to get right? If we don't have any laws, we're condemned. Okay? But the laws that he didn't understand that was gone was the sacrifices. He was arguing about the tithings. It's not necessarily arguing, more so asking a question. We were telling him that the tithings are gone. When you read Hebrews chapter 7 through, or 6 through 10, it talks about the tithings being gone. There's no more tithings. All we have is alms, offering, building offering, or offering, or charity. You can give as much of that as you want. Okay? But tithings are gone. That was towards the Levites. Um, yeah, I want to read James 1 and 14. James chapter 1, verse 14. 
It says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. There it is again. You know, some brothers, they, uh, they get mad at the Most High. Most High, why this happened to me? I'm in a wheelchair. You did this to me. No, the Most High don't do any of that to you. You did it to yourself. Okay? Look at verse 14. Uh, 15. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. See? That lust that you do. And, and see, brothers say, or sisters say, oh, you know, porn is innocent. You're not hurting nobody. Actually, you're hurting yourself. Uh, a lot of brothers become impotent from doing it too much. Some brothers can't get throughout the day without doing it. Some sisters can't get throughout the day without doing it. All right? All kinds of problems can happen behind doing that all the time. You use something too much, you lose it, right? It's the way it works. Then you can't satisfy your wife, and then you, then you find yourself losing your wife to somebody else, or vice versa. You know, Sin, what we, what we have to understand is sin hardness, just like a hardcore criminal. A, a criminal doesn't get hardened unless he continues to get caught in the act. The more he gets caught in the act, or the more sin he's in, he begins to get hardened. It's the same way with us being in sin, with lust, with adultery, with thievery, with robbing, stealing, killing, you start to get hardened. This is what we don't want, being in the truth. Uh, verse 15. Then what, when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth what? Bringeth forth death. Okay, because you can't stop. A lot of y'all can't stop when you're in sin. You can't stop. It feels too good. But the shame face, the shame face brothers and sisters are going to be the ones that are able to change and stop it. Okay. Let's go to Ephesians 5 and 11. Ephesians 5 and 11. Ephesians 5 and 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather, what? Reprove them. For it, is, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Most of these things, if you're watching these shows, these um, sitcoms, all this stuff is in secret. These things that you're watching, you'd be embarrassed watching in front of somebody else. Okay? Your phone... If you're using your phone to watch a lot of this stuff, it could be retrieved. Esau has a way of retrieving these things now. Okay, if you're in politics and you try to, you know, get into that high level of ranking of the ranking system or any other thing out there, I'm not saying any of y'all to get in politics because it's wicked. But they can retrieve all that information and humiliate you with the information and with the things you've been watching. That social media is the thing that gets you caught up every time. Okay. Uh, it says uh, verse twelve again. For it is, what is it? Verse twelve. Yeah. For it is shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. And lust the conscience. So you young men who lust over girls in school or high school and satisfy your lust through porn on your cell phones. You can get caught up behind that. You older men, same thing. You who are married, bored, you know, you try to entertain your thoughts with other women virtually. You satisfy yourselves through virtual sin or porn. You make a fantasy of reality through following what? The action through porn. All these things can cause a damper in your relationships, a damper on your life, okay? There's no difference in the simulation of playing a video game on PlayStation or the Wii Station. It's, it's, it's really no difference. When you play the Wii Station, you get like an ecstasy of winning. You watch children or you watch grown men when they play that, it's an ecstasy that they get from playing the video game. Okay? It's the same thing with the porn industry. Okay? And you women are not exempt either. You're not exempt. You know, you have the same problems. You say it's safe, you say it's innocent, it's not. It's not a real person, but you're building a mountain of sins as well within. 
And like I said, it makes you a harder person uh, for your mate to satisfy. Okay? So through sin, we become burdened. Just like a, a, a hardened. So we have to change that. Let's go to um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 4. This is a heavy one. This is a heavy topic, man, uh, that, that we're discussing because, you know, uh, this affects us from the rich all the way down to the poor. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 4. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles, which know not of the Most High. Concupiscence is that lust, that feeling that you get to have sex. It's a strong, it's a strong desire to have sex, okay, with someone who is not right for you. Someone who is, uh, you see, you go to a club on a Friday night just to find somebody to have sex with. That's concupiscence, okay. That's not your mate. That's not someone you're betrothed through. That's not your love. That's not your uh, your love. That's not your wife. Okay, it's a strong desire to have sex with someone you shouldn't really be with. So, don't entrap demons hey, on yourself. Excuse me, sir. Go ahead. Man, you going in too heavy tonight? <laughs> it's necessary, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I can't lie now. You're going in on me tonight. Hey. I don't know about I, nobody else. Hey, that's what but the I whole purpose. I gotta get my soul clean. I gotta speak up. <laughs> hey, it's but necessary. I, I think I needed that, brother. So thank you. Okay. But okay. I ain't no porn star. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> hey, my whole job is just to get this. I, I don't watch that either. Though. Nah, nah, nah. You, you corrected me on. Messing around on your wife and all that. That's what's up. Okay. Thank you, man. Yeah, you can't be watching Chocolate City. You know, can't be watching that old porn. But yeah, I'm glad it, you know, anything, if this helps anybody, I thank the Most High for letting it help you because, like I said, a lot of us are in sin, and this is one of those sins that hardly anyone really speaks on. You know, the churches don't speak on it, definitely, they don't speak on it. Um, let's go to. Um, we're almost done here. Let's go to Matthew 23 and just kind of a, a short lesson. Let's go to Matthew 23 and 27. Matthew 23 and 27. It says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You guys are the scribes, Pharisees, and the hypocrites now, okay? Because remember, the Levites are gone as far as the priestly order. That's gone. So now it's resting on our shoulders, the servants. It's resting on us. This is woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto witted sepulchres. Sepulchres are graveyards. It says, which indeed appear beautiful hour. You ever go to a graveyard? You see how pretty the stones are? They got a they got uh, flowers all over the, over the place. They got, you know, a nice um, hedge. Everything looks nice, right? So it's said outwardly, when you look at people, they got the makeup on. They look beautiful, right? Buff, chisel. But it says here, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. This is the spirits, the wicked spirits that we have in ourselves when we have all these sins on us. Verse 28, even so, ye are also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. So we all have to get ourselves right. Okay? It's, it's a work in progress. For a lot of you, it's a work in progress. We got to continue to work on every aspect of our lives. This is one of them. Let's go to Sarah 26 and 19 in the Apocrypha. The whole object of this is to what? Stay pure. Or learn to be pure. Sarah 26 verse 19. It says, my son. I'll, I'll wait for you if you're trying to get this verse. Sarah 26 
or Ecclesiasticus and the Apocrypha, chapter 26, and we're going to start with verse 19. Sharak 26, verse 19. It says, My son, keep the flower of thine age sound. What's the flower of your age? The flower of your age is your youth. Okay? You're strong when you're in your youth. Okay? When you're still able to do the things that you could do as a young man, even in your older age, you still are in the youth of your flower or the strength of your age. It says, And give not thy strength to strangers. Okay? So, um, when it says giving out your strength to strangers, that's talking about you with this person, that person, that person. That's why it says enjoy the wife of your youth because you get to dwell old together. Okay? Some of you are in your second marriages. That's, that's the wife of your youth too. If you get remarried, that's your new wife. That's the wife of your youth because you're still in full strength. Okay? So enjoy that. Don't, you know, it, it eliminates all the stress going from one person to another person. It eliminates that stress. Um, it says, My son, keep the flower of thine age sound, and give not thy strength to strangers. Okay, so these are important, these are important tools to have. I'm going to read two more verses, and we'll end it with that. Let's go to, um, in, the, in the New Testament, let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and 18. It says, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Okay. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you have of the Most High, and you are not your own. When a man is sleeping with multiple women that spirit is in that man the same thing with a woman if a woman has more than two uh, more than one partner she got two three four five partner all those men's spirits are on that woman and you see a lot of women they get kind of mad or really aggressive or angry or they can't you know there's a lot of confusion going on it's because she's dealing with multiple partners all those spirits are on that one woman You'd be like, man, what's wrong with her? Why is she acting like that? It's because she got multiple spirits on her. Okay? It affects the body. It affects the soul. So, remember, the church is within you. So if you let someone else outside of that circle sleep with you, you're, you're, you're basically polluting that spirit that's in, in you from the Most High. It's basically being polluted. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and 22. This is the last verse I'm going to bring out tonight. And I'll open it up for comments or questions. Or, all right. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22. It says, Abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil. That's plain. So this, these things that we brought out tonight, really, I mean, I, I felt that it was needed. A lot of us are involved in these problems. Uh, we're all to blame. You know, none of us are pure. Or we're trying to get there step by step by me bringing this out. I just want to help, you know, us as a whole, as the church, come together. You know, but like I said, um, we're working, we're a work in progress, all of us, all of us. You know, the quicker we get there, the better. Are there any questions or comments? I said, brother, that what you just brought out, man, uh, I feel like it, it helped me a lot. I know that it clarified a whole lot of things for me. And I thank you for the stuff that you brought out, for the, the voice that you heard when he told you to bring that this right here out tonight, you know. Um, um, it was well needed, sir. And that's my comment. All praises. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> Shalom, Akiman Aqua. This is the R. Shalom. And um, I like to free me. Uh, this, I really feel this is a very good topic, and it 
it, it can cut, and, and the truth does. It, it, it does that to you. It's that refining, and you know, like gold. It hit those spots, you know, that... And so I really appreciate you bringing it out. And just to comment on that, I remember, um, you know, I'm an old dude, um, and I remember back in the day, that was just the way it, it was. We were living it, like whoremongers, I mean, and not really having a standard to keep up to, not even thinking that the commandments were valid. So we got lost, we got uh, deceived, and we started to enjoy that which was wicked. But what I wanted to say, like all the scriptures you brought out, I'm so thankful that you brought them out because those are still things that still can creep up. And, and you know, you can still, you talk about the eye. And when you see those things, just like when you talked about David and Uriah's wife, but, um, all of that, you have to learn to flee. And right now is what I find so um, refreshing and, and, and it helps me out now that I can turn away from it. You just simply do that. When you first get that temptation laid before you through your eyes, you have to have the ability and choose to turn, not just your head and your eyes, but the thoughts that are impacted in your brain. Because when you see that, and you know what I'm talking about, you know the women that's out there, you know the things that, that catch that eye, that it, it puts an imprint in your brain, you have to turn your eye and also turn your thoughts immediately back onto the things of Yahweh. And that is when you will feel that evil spirit flee from you like you brought out in one of the scriptures. So it, it, it takes some active practice, and I'm glad you brought it out because this is a stumbling block and a lot of people don't bring it up and they don't address it to their congregations, to their brotherhood, and it's needed. And so I appreciate that and all praise to Yahweh, by Hashem HaMashiach, for you bringing this up. All praises to the Most High and the Son as well. Hey, man, thanks for the comment. That, that's help, very helpful what you said. Uh, those are the things that plague us. And, and like you said, it creeps up. All these sins creep up. They all do. And all it takes is you to be around those, those same people that you once were with or the same things uh, or the same places or the same nostalgias, okay, things of old coming back can cause you to fall. So it's just about you having the instruments and the tools to be able to stop from doing something that you already know that you have a problem with. Any, any other women got any comments or questions? Any other women online? Okay. So am I, this is far as all, man. I was going to piggyback up what the uh, brother was saying. Like, yeah, you know, we all fight, fight in the flesh. You know what I mean? And like you were saying that, you know, we got to, we got to surround ourselves with people like-minded like us that's in the word. Because it's like they said, the temptation it leads you right back to where you were before you got the truth. So, you know, you just have to keep yourself surrounded, like-minded with brothers and sisters in the truth, you know, that will help you, and you also, you will help them also to, you know, vice versa, so. Okay. Very, That's all very, I want to say. Yeah, very, very, very true. So, um. Shalom. Hey, Shalom. Shalom, yeah, this is Yonatan. Shalom, Mark. I wanted to, uh, just, I just wanted to, uh, you know, put a couple of scriptures out there and let, you know, let the, let the word speak for itself. I didn't want to comment on them. Okay. But uh, I always think about these when, uh, when I'm tempted and, you know, when I'm just out there, out there in the world and trying to maintain that straight walk. It's um, the book of Matthews, chapter 5, and verse 29 and 30. Okay. And as well as... Um, the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 22 and 23. Okay. Everybody got that? You know, um, yeah. Did you want me to read it? You would, yeah, yeah, read it. Huh? Go ahead and read it. Yeah. Okay, this is Matthew, chapter 5, verse 29. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee 
that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Okay? So that's talking about also the church. Uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 6. And you said verse 2 and 23? Verse 22 and verse 23 okay. and come. Verse 22 and 23. This is Matthew chapter 6, verse 22 and verse 23. It says, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Okay, that's that one mind, one soul. Uh, verse 23, but if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. Very good verse too. So that eye also is the mind as well. Your mind has to be calibrated with the Most High's, you know, all his laws, statutes, commandments. So, uh, yeah, those are good verses, out. Good verses. It's all about stamina in this truth. You see some guys, they come in, they come in hard, and they burn out fast. But it's all about stamina, you know. Uh, learning, his, learning his words, man. Learning his formulas. Because there's formulas all throughout the scriptures on how we should live. It's basic, too. Basic as possible. But we make it difficult. So, uh, with that... Are there any other questions or comments? Any of the sisters want to speak to yeah, that? Uh, this is, Go ahead. Go ahead, I. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is R. Uh, I'm going to be real quick on this one. But this is a uh, last comment on, like, when you look at adultery and you look at fornication and things we're talking about, we're looking at it in the... Um, in the physical sense, and that's what the lesson was, but you also touched on the, the spiritual sense. And it's a direct correlation between this and idolatry. Because we know throughout Scripture, you know, we're called whoremongers and fornicate against the Most High. And so if we can control how we do it in the physical and, and, and really do that, that would help us understand falling into the traps against sinning against the Most High and being whoremongers against Him. In other words, like we, we spoke about it earlier, how, you know, some Israelites or some brothers, they, can't, they keep dabbling in other stuff. They keep dabbling in other stuff. All that other stuff is still appealing to them, other religions or other things that they may be doing that is against the Most High's laws. We are playing the whore when we do that yeah. against the Most High. So if we can practice what we do here in, 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 in a fleshly sense, that would further enhance us to be able to please the Most High and be a cud with Him and be one with Him and be exclusive to Him like He is exclusive to us and not be whoremongering like we would do in a, in a flesh. To be prince over my people Israel, I have been with you wherever you have gone and have destroyed all the enemies in your path. I will make you a great name among the great ones of the earth. I will assign a place for my people in Israel. There I will plant them, and they shall dwell in their own land. 